All right. So uh, here is a application that uh, that I would like you to uh, think of. I have a filter, a linear time invariant filter, okay, an LTI system represented by a, a filter whose uh, whose length equal to p. Length equal to p, okay, and I have a very long sequence of data. For example, maybe it's a speech data that uh, that, that is uh, you know uh, going on for um, several seconds, and you know that typically speech is sampled at uh, eight kilohertz or sixteen kilohertz. So within even within one second, you will get a large number of samples. The filter itself may be ten taps or twenty taps. So basically, the the data sequence. This is the data sequence. data sequence and the uh, data sequence is much longer than the uh, the length of the data sequence length of the data sequence is much longer than length of the filter length of the filter okay now uh, when input output relationship the uh, input output is 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 given by y of n is equal to x of n convolved with h of n notice that this is linear convolution linear convolution okay now uh, this is where we are going to uh, use the results that we have uh, been uh, we've been discussing and we will obtain a uh, uh, important uh, rep representation of, of what we have been studying okay so the first thing that we are going to do is to break up this long data sequence into segments of length l okay so these are segments of length l segments of length l length l so this is segment number 1 so it starts with it ends with uh, sample number l minus 1 then the next sample goes from l to 2l minus 1 and then this is sample number 2l and then starting from here that will be segment number 3 so this is segment number oh, call it segment number 0 this will be segment number 1 segment number 2 and so on okay so uh, what what are we uh, what are we what are we uh, doing we are saying that the sequence x of n can be written as individual blocks summation r equal to 0 through infinity x subscript r those are the blocks n minus r times l okay so basically you take each segment shift it by um, the appropriate multiple of l and that becomes the part of your uh, segment okay so um, uh, and each of these uh, segments uh, uh, you know uh, are of length l so we can rewrite it in the following fashion where we say that these blocks okay this is block number r okay uh, this is equal to the how do you how do we um, get this segment you take the original sequence you sh advance it by the appropriate multiple of l and then take it from 0 to l minus 1 so basically each of these uh, blocks are uh, represented between 0 to l minus 1 okay so uh, r n plus r l and n goes from 0 through l minus 1 so i have broken it up into blocks of length l each of these blocks the indexing is from the index 0 to l minus 1 and to construct the combined signal i will take these segments and then appropriately shift and then put it into place so basically this is this is what uh, we will get so the computation that we want to do is y of n is equal to 
x of n convolved with h of n, linear convolution. This can be written as summation r equal to 0 through infinity, the corresponding uh, uh, blocks that are uh, present, x of n can be written as x subscript r n minus r l convolved with h of n. Okay, And this will give us for each of these segments, there will be a corresponding output y r of n. x r of n convolved with h r of n produces y r of n. The r equal to 0 to infinity y subscript r n minus r l. Or in other words, we can write down for the rth block, this is obtained by taking the input rth block and convolving it with the uh, with the impulse response h of n h of n okay so what did we do we have a, a filter with length p we have an input data which is very long we are going to uh, break it into segments of length l and for each of these segments we are going to compute the corresponding output y and once you have computed the corresponding output y you appropriately shift and then add these signals. Okay, I hope you are uh, uh, able to, uh, to visualize that. Okay, now the important thing to note is that I, I need to do a circular convolution. Oh, sorry, I need to do linear convolution. Okay, linear convolution, that is what is uh, uh, required for us. Let me just write it down. Okay, the next step. Okay, so y r of n is equal to x r of n convolved with h of n. This is linear convolution. Okay, let's write down the lengths. This has got length l. This has got length p. Okay, so then using these two information, y of n will have length linear convolution when you convolve two, length, two sequences you can write down the result this will be equal to l plus p minus 1 l plus p minus 1 okay now linear convolution will produce a sequence of length l plus p minus 1 i can also obtain the same result using circular convolution if I add enough zeros to make it uh, equal to L plus P minus 1. We have, we have seen examples of that. How if you add enough number of zeros, then you will get the correct num uh, uh, output of the linear convolution. So let me just give you an, uh, uh, let me give you the example, uh, example for that. Um, we know that the uh, these uh, the linear uh, sorry the circular convolution five point circular convolution of this sequence one 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 uh, six point circular convolution of one uh, linear uh, circularly convolved with uh, six point circular convolution six point circular convolution with one 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 this we, we we saw how we obtained the, uh, the a circular convolution by the same token if you had added sufficient number of zeros and how many zeros are we uh, are we talking about the linear convolution of these two sequences this is length equal to 6 length equal to 6 this is length equal to 6 Okay, so linear convolution, linear convolution of x1 of n convolved with x2 of n, what would have been the length? Length would have been 6 plus 6 minus 1, length equal to 11. Okay, so now what I would like to do is the following, create a circular convolution 
with a 11 point uh, with 11 by 11 matrix okay so the matrix is going to be 1 0 0 0 0 okay uh, one more zero okay and 1 1 1 1 1 did i get that right did i get 11 points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 correct okay and do the so the, then these will all be in red okay next row after that you can fill in the rest one one and then you get zero 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 one 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 more let me fill out 1 1 1 followed by 1 2 3 4 5 1 1 1 and you can fill in the rest of the basically it's a circular uh, uh, circular con convolution that, that you will find and what you will find here is the same sequence 1 1 1 1 1 6 ones appended with five zeros just like you did for the other one. one two three four five okay and this will produce for you the output which is the same as linear convolution one two three four five six five four three two one okay we did circular convolution Okay, this is uh, basically uh, it's uh, you take a, um, n equal to eleven, l equal to six in this particular case, uh, n equal to eleven, and then that's what we have done circular convolution. And you can see that you will get a this is in our case it's a eleven point circular convolution uh, between these two, and that gives you a linear convolution. So a six point sequence, six point sequence with five zeros uh, convolved with uh, a circular convolution with, with, with six uh, with the 11 with five uh, padded zeros this circularly convolved with 11 point sequence okay with another six point sequence uh, with five zeros basically uh, this gave us linear convolution linear convolution with n equal to 11 okay so this is the key result now i want you to apply this to in this particular case i want an output length p minus 1 so what do we do we take x r of n okay this has got length this has got length l you append we append p minus 1 zeros p minus 1 zeros okay and then we take the l plus p minus 1 point dft okay let's call that as x r of k now what about h of n h of n has got length p we will append l minus 1 zeros append l minus 1 zeros this again will be an l plus p minus 1 point sequence for which we take a p plus l my l plus p minus 1 point dft that produces h of k okay now x r of k multiplied by x of k by h of k this is going to produce for me the this is the same as y r of k 
circular convolution. Okay, this is going to be the same as the uh, uh, the linear convolution that we need between x r of n convolved with h of n. This is a L plus p minus one point sequence. Okay, so what did we do? We took x r of n appended p minus 1 zeros took the d of t x r of k h of n appended uh, l minus 1 uh, zeros made it a l plus p minus 1 point sequence took an l plus p minus 1 point d of t and called that h of k multiplied the two together took the inverse d of t and then produced a sequence which is x r of n so visually this is what is happening okay think of it as these sequences x0 of n, x1 of n, x2 of n and so on. Now, this has to be multiplied with the, uh, with the, uh, with the filter, uh, filter uh, h, of, uh, h of n. If you multiply, if you convolve, sorry, convolve, if you convolve this x0 of n, it will produce y0 of n. Okay, this is equal to x0 of n convolved with h of n. This is equal to x1 of n convolved with h of n. All of these uh, sequence values y0 of n, y1 of n, you can obtain through direct convolution or you can obtain through the DFT that we have shown here. And what we are doing is, as we obtain these outputs, we are adding the outputs together to get the a final result. This method is called the, th there is overlap between the two uh, uh, sequences or y0 and y of n. This is called the overlap save method. O over o overlap save method of computing the, uh, of computing the, uh, the convolution. Okay, uh, overlap add, sorry, not overlap save, o overlap add method overlap add method of, of doing the uh, convolution by using smaller length sequences by breaking it into smaller length sequence and computing the uh, convolution. Now the key question to ask is, is this more efficient to do it in the time domain or to do it in the frequency domain? Okay, That is the key question that we will answer when we uh, look at what is the most efficient way of computing the DFT, which will be using via the FFT curve. So uh, what I want to leave with you is the following. With, with, this, with today's uh, lesson, we have been able to cover all the um, aspects of the DFT, looking at the DFS, discrete Fourier series, the properties of the discrete Fourier series, and then from there obtaining the DFT as one period of the, uh, the, the DFS sequence, the, uh, the sequence X of N as one period of the periodic signal X tilde of, uh, of N. And then for the DFT itself, we have obtained all of the properties, duality, multiplication in time, multiplication frequency, shift in frequency, shift in time, the symmetry properties, all of that we have been able to derive. Finally, we said that if you want to do linear convolution, we can append enough number of zeros and then do circular convolution. How do you do circular convolution? You take the corresponding length DFT, multiply the DFT coefficients together and take the inverse DFT. And that is what we have done. And so we showed that computing the linear convolution of a long sequence can be done as breaking it up into small segments. And for each of these segments, doing the convolution with the, with the filter coefficients and that convolution, we do it using the DFT. Now, how efficient is it to do it in this manner? And uh, how do we uh, exploit the, uh, the results of the fast Fourier transform? That will be the uh, coverage of the last session. So what we will do is first look at the most efficient way of computing the, uh, the DFT, which is the fast Fourier transform. Once we have done that, we will come back and look at the computations that we do, the number of computations that are needed if we do the convolution in the time domain versus if you do the convolution in the using the DFT. So that will be the final session that we will be looking at and we will do that uh, in the next session. Thank you.